Hey everybody, day 14 of Commit is a calming practice where we focus on our breath, stillness of mind, and making the body feel good. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stick around to the end of the video where we break down a pose from today's practice. Let's start reclined on our backs with our knees together, feet wide apart. Hands on your belly, focus on its rise and fall as you breathe deeply. Walk your feet in to hip distance apart. Send both knees to the right, then to the left, sweeping them from side to side, finding movement through the hips. your legs to center. Draw your right knee to chest as you extend the left leg out long on the mat, allowing it to rest down. Left hand guides the right knee over to the left in a reclined twist. Make sure both shoulders remain grounded in this position as you extend your right arm to the side and gaze over your right shoulder. Take your time returning to center. Hug the left knee to chest as you extend the right. To a reclined twist, guiding the left knee to the right side. And release, returning to center. Draw both knees in and rock a little from side to side. Make your way to a table position now, either by rocking to seated then coming through, or turning onto your side and pressing up. Line yourself up in table, 
and begin to move through cat-cow flowing with your breath. to a flat back. Walk the hands forward. Keep the hips elevated as you lower your chest to extended puppy pose. Staying in position as much as possible, needle the right arm under the left to a twist. Untwist to puppy. Needle the left arm under the right this time. Untwist and move forward to a Sphinx pose on your belly, propping onto your forearms, palms down. Get long through the back and neck, shoulders down and away from the ears. Lower the chest and press back to child's pose. Hips over heels, focus on releasing tension in the lower back. Come through table to downward facing dog. Walk out the heels if you like, as you press the front of the mat away from you with your hands getting long through the upper body. Draw the right knee forward to pigeon pose. Square your hips off to the mat. Get long through the back before you fold over that front leg. Deepen your breath.
curl the back toes under and press back to down dog. Deep stretch. To the left side now, draw the knee forward to pigeon pose. Square the hips off to the mat. Make sure your toes are pointing straight back. Get long through the back. And then fold over that front leg. Coming back up, make your way to Downward Facing Dog. Shift forward, coming down onto your belly. Cross your arms ahead of you. Straighten the legs, pointing the toes straight back. Lay your head on your forearms as you deepen your breath here in Crocodile Pose. Good. Bend the right knee, bringing the foot up. Reach back and grab onto the foot with the right hand drawing it in towards your seat as much as you comfortably can in a half frog pose. Release, other side, half frog pose on the left. open wing pose. Send the left arm out to the side at shoulder height. Step the right foot back and behind the left leg, opening up the body to the right side, keeping the right hand down for support. Twist to the other side, extend the right arm, step the left foot over and back, opening the body to the left. Release, returning to your belly. Curl the toes under and press to downward facing dog. Slowly walk to the front of your mat to a rag doll position. Forward fold, allowing the upper body to hang heavy as you hug your elbows and find a little sway from side to side. Option to keep the hands down or hold the legs if you prefer. Release the arms now. Tighten up the legs and glutes. Small bend in the knees as we roll slowly to standing, one vertebrae at a time.
In standing, begin to roll the shoulders back. Clasp your hands behind you, step the right foot back, lift the chest and fold forward from the hips to an intense side stretch, raising the arms. Engage the legs strongly as you return to standing, keeping the back flat. Keep the hands as they are. Step the right foot up, left foot back. Lift the chest and fold. the legs and return to standing. Release the hands, step the left foot up to mountain pose. Lift the right foot and send it back hinging to a warrior three pose. Lower the right foot to a warrior one. Straighten the front leg. Forward fold to a pyramid pose. Bend the front knee and lower the back leg, raising the arms in low lunge. On an exhale, twist to the left, lowering the arms. Inhale as you untwist and raise the arms. Exhale, lower the hands, curl the back toes under and step it back to plank pose. Lower to your belly with control or hover in chaturanga to upward facing dog. To down dog. Walk to the front of your mat, coming to ragdoll, allowing the upper body to get heavy in the fold. Arms down, engage the legs, slight bend in the knees as you slowly roll to standing one vertebrae at a time, arms at your sides. To the other side now, shift your weight to the right foot, float the left foot coming to a warrior three.
for your one. Fold to pyramid pose. Low lunge, arms up. On an exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, untwist, raise the arms. Exhale, hands down. Step back to plank. Flow through, lowering down, then to upward facing dog. To downward facing dog. Walk to a forward fold at the top of your mat. Engage the legs and roll to standing, arms at your sides. Step your feet as wide as your mat, toes spilling off the edges, hands together at your heart. Lower the hips to garland pose. Get long through the back and deepen your breath. To seated in easy pose, place your right hand down beside you, side bend, left arm reaches up and over. To the other side. Twist to the right, left hand to right knee as we gaze back behind us. To the other side, twisting to the left. to center, draw the knees up, bringing them together and sending your feet out as wide as your mat. Recline onto your back. Take a few deep breaths here to finish up. Hands on your belly. Let's talk about a reclined twist. Now this is a really great feel-good pose that's good for relieving stress, massaging the digestive organs, stretching the back of the body, realigning the spine. I really love this pose and it's one that I do almost every single day. And it always looks a little bit different when I'm doing it, depending on how I'm feeling that day. So let's start on our backs with our legs drawn in. 
Now to show you, I'm gonna be bringing my left knee over to the right side, so twisting to the right. So to get into the pose, I'm just gonna hang on to this left leg as I just allow the right leg to rest down. So I'm not keeping those muscles engaged at all. I'm not flexing the foot or pointing the toes. Just relaxing that right leg down. And then from here, I wanna make sure that my chest is squared off to the ceiling. So both shoulders are grounded down onto the mat. My right hand is gonna guide that left knee over to the right side in a twist. And as much as possible, I'm gonna focus on keeping the opposite from the twist shoulder. So in this case, my left shoulder down on the mat without lifting it up. As soon as it starts to lift up, that's kind of a sign that it's like, okay, I'm twisting far enough. So to get the full benefit of it, that's what we wanna aim for. Now, if this is really, really uncomfortable, you can shift a little bit onto your side once you've gone as far as you can to, to increase the comfort level for you. But the goal ultimately is to keep both shoulders grounded, chest squared to the ceiling. So if your toes touch down here, you can just allow your foot to rest down. And we're gonna keep the right hand on that opposite leg, just resting here. My left arm is gonna extend out to the side. Now I have a wall here that's in the way, but normally you would just extend it all the way out. And then you're gonna turn your gaze over that opposite shoulder. Now, obviously, that's a really, really deep twist. It's gonna look different for everybody. Eventually, you can work your way to bringing the entire leg down onto the mat in the twist while keeping both shoulders grounded. Sometimes that feels good, sometimes it's not gonna feel good. So I do it sometimes. It depends on how warmed up I am, what kind of practice I was doing, um, and how I feel that day. So there are a few things that you can do here to make sure that you're a little bit more comfortable in this pose. Now, one thing to mention is that if you have back, hip pain, or a uh, back or hip injury or history of injury, you really wanna proceed with caution, move slowly into the twist, and hold back if something doesn't feel right. So, something to note is the knee should be in line with the hip. We wanna avoid drawing the knee up too high as we come into the twist, because that's gonna put a little bit of added strain on the lower back that we don't want. So. We're gonna keep the knee in line with the hip as we slowly come into the twist. And something to do if you don't have any props with you while you're practicing, if that's really uncomfortable and you're just not quite there yet, is you can bring your knee a little bit lower than hip height to reduce the intensity of the twist here. And just gently rest that twisting foot onto the other leg. Something else that we can do here depending on, on our bodies, if it feels better for us, is we can bend that lower leg as we're coming into the twist. So now I have both legs bent, and that's just gonna kind of be a personal preference for you. It's not wrong to bend both legs. You can keep it straight, you can bend it. You're still getting that same twist. So it depends on your preference entirely. Another thing you can do if you don't like twisting the one leg over the other, if you find it easier, is you can just bring both legs over together. So it's not gonna be as intense again, but it is a really nice twist and a really good pose to do as an alternative to that if you don't have any props. Now, with the props, if you have a cushion or a bolster or a blanket, you can position it at hip height so that as we go into our twist, if your knee doesn't touch all the way down, instead of just kind of floating it there and trying to hold it there without being able to rest down, you can allow your knee to rest comfortably here on the bolster, on the cushion. And again, we're not flexing the feet, we're not pointing through the toes, I'm just relaxing this hand down onto the leg without putting any additional pressure. It's just resting there and looking over to the opposite side. I find this to be a really, really comfortable variation of this pose. Alternatively, if you have blocks, you can position one at hip height and one underneath the foot coming into the twist. And it's just gonna look something like that. And so as you twist over, if you feel the opposite shoulder lifting, I don't know if you noticed, I shifted my upper body a little bit. So I twisted my lower body this way and then I readjusted the top body because I really just wanted to deepen the stretch 
And that's what I felt felt really good in that moment. So do what feels right for you. Play around with the pose. Find which way you like doing it best in that moment. Don't just automatically go to what you did last time or yesterday because our bodies change day to day depending on our hydration levels, how much sleep we got, our stress levels. So it's really important to listen to your body in the moment that you're practicing and do what feels best.